Dude, did you see this crap? What, man? Vega. It's a thou over a thou. I mean, it's it's Titan. It's more than Titan. It's ridiculous. Have you seen these prices? Yeah, man. Don't hold on. Hold on. Don't worry. Let me explain. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to Gamer Meld. With the dumb little skit out of the way, for those who haven't heard, the Vega Frontier Edition is available for pre-order, although I will say I'm not really sure if retailers jump the gun or what. Either way, this means we have pricing. Unfortunately, it seems to have caused a ton of confusion about the pricing for RX Vega, the consumer GPU. Basically, Vega Frontier cards are $1,200 and up, which has led people to think the gaming Vega cards will even be more expensive because we know the gaming performance is going to be better. Let me start off by saying this simply is not and will not be the case. I didn't do a video on the news when it dropped because I didn't really think it was important with it being the Frontier card. That was until I started seeing people really concerned about it, and I get it. I partially blame the confusion on AMD's marketing team, as well as those who are trying to compare the Frontier Edition to NVIDIA's Founders Edition. As if this card is essentially just the one made by AMD before OEMs make them. No, it, it's a completely different card. There's a reason Raja said gamers can buy it, but they really should wait for the RX version. When gamers think of expensive graphics cards, they think of the infamous Titan line of GPUs. But the reason for that is because that's the highest tier card marketed towards consumers. The thing is that GPUs can be far, far more expensive. This is when we get into something like accelerator GPUs. These are specialized GPUs that are utilized in things like smart cars, artificial intelligence, CAD programs, and data centers. These aren't cheap. To be honest, the pricing that came out was far less than I ever expected. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying $1,500 is cheap by any stretch of the imagination for anyone who knows the kind of setup that I have and things like that. I mean, I can't just throw down $1,500. My point is that this is something for huge businesses or government organizations and things like that. They just aren't marketed to consumers just because they aren't made for consumers. And consumers wouldn't really have any use for it. These are like NVIDIA's Tesla line or Quadra line of GPUs. For reference though, let's look at a GPU that AMD was comparing their Frontier Edition to, the Tesla P100. See, you thought $1,500 was a lot, try eight to 9,000. You may be wondering why there's such a massive difference. Well, besides the fact that the absolute best of the best is always gonna carry a premium because you have low numbers of sales, but in this case, there are really a few reasons for the differences. One example is half precision or 16-bit floating point operations. See, when you hear something like 13 teraflops with the consumer cards, they're almost always talking 32-bit floating point operations. That's because you don't really use FP16 in gaming because it's basically more to use to hold numbers instead of running arithmetic. But it can be executed twice as fast as 32-bit when it can be utilized. So if we take a look at, say, Vega Frontier and compare it to, say, the 1080, Vega has 26.2 teraflops of theoretical 16-bit computational power, while the 1080 has 138 gigaflops. That's a massive difference. And it's because the 1080 doesn't need that type of computations. Consumer cards also have far less double precision or 64-bit floating point operations than, say, Tesla's. Now, AMD hasn't disclosed theirs, but when you start talking 64-bit operations on GPUs, that's when you get a really, really expensive GPUs. And we don't have all that much information on the Vega Frontier yet, but when you start comparing Tesla's to their GTX line, there's quite a bit of difference from certain applications that only support them to error detection and correction, as well as much more server use. And really, there's quite a bit more. But my point in all of this isn't to discuss the differences between the types of GPUs, but to explain that there is a difference. It's kind of similar to trying to get Ryzen's pricing out of Epic. Epic offers different feature sets and is going to be more expensive because of the server applications it offers. Now, is there a chance that RX Vega will be $800 or $1,000? I don't think so, but it's possible. Just know that the Frontier Edition really means nothing for the consumer card. So yeah, while that does it for today's video, I really hope you liked it. Definitely give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think RX Vega's price is going to be and whether you're still waiting for it. Just let me know that in the comments below. That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggest a video to the left. Thanks so much for coming, and as always, have a great day.